Welcome to r slash off my chest, where OP, where OP wants to take the clothes off her chest and become a topless maid. Today's episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. I just watched The Batman the other day, and man, it was good. Watching it made me want to go back and watch some of the recent Batman movies I'd missed, like Joker. I was thrilled to find out that it's on Netflix, but of course, that content is unavailable if you live in the US, like me. And I mean, why? I give Netflix 16 bucks a month, so why can't I watch Joker? Well, joke's on you, Netflix, because I've got ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a VPN service that allows you to manually set your digital location so websites think that you're logging in from somewhere else. So even though Joker isn't available in the US, it is available in other countries. So all I have to do is change my location and bam, Joker's available. I love ExpressVPN because not only does it unlock content, it also protects your privacy while you're at it. When you're behind a VPN, you've got an extra layer of protection against hackers and companies seeking to violate your privacy. You can get three months free of ExpressVPN by going to expressvpn.com slash r slash. Our next Reddit post is from Salem Rose. I want to be a topless maid. Hear me out. I saw this girl on TikTok do it, and honestly, it seems like the perfect job, in theory. I'm okay with nudity. I used to be a dancer. I love my body. Also, I love cleaning. Today's my day off, and I'm about to spend the whole day cleaning, and I'm so excited. I wish I could combine these passions and have guys pay me to come over and clean almost naked. It's perfect because I don't have to do the greatest job cleaning and, in theory, they don't touch me. I can do something I enjoy while being cute and sexy and then make a lot of money and leave. Of course, I don't think that I can ever actually do it because it's so dangerous. Maybe if I could hire a bodyguard, but I don't think that would be cost effective because I'd want to pay them well. Maybe one day. I don't know. I would love it, though. Okay, down, <laughs> down in the comments, we have a really interesting story from Chicken Sandwich, which uh, I think shed some interesting light on this. I used to have a job where I came to people's houses and fixed their computers. And that was with clothes on and it wasn't sexual at all. And I still had some uncomfortable situations with customers. One of the scariest stories I had to deal with was where I spent about three hours fixing someone's computer issues, gave the guy the bill, and he's just very politely like, no thanks. I was confused, so he clarified that he was politely thanking me for doing the work, that he had no complaints, but he had zero intention to pay and he asked me to leave. Upon my further confusion and not being sure how to respond to that, the dude pulls out a gun on me and, again, very politely and calmly instructs me to collect my things and walks me to the door. Like, he didn't rob me or actually harm me and he wasn't verbally abusive or anything. He was just very matter-of-factly informing me that he never had any intention of paying me at that point and that I was leaving, which I did. And thinking back on that, if this guy could just do that to me, like if he wanted to, he could have done a lot worse to me as well. And there's not a damn thing that I could have done about it. Props to anyone who has a job going into people's houses. And the comment beneath that says exactly what I was thinking. He did rob you. It's called theft of services. Our next Reddit post is from Trixie. I woke up this morning absolutely craving Chipotle, but I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. I'm digging all around my room, and I found a $3 scratch ticket that hasn't been done. By the way, I don't gamble, and I've never even bought a scratch ticket in my life. I'm like, what the hell is this? I scratch the ticket, and I keep reading the back, and I'm pretty sure that I won $10,000. I just went to the convenience store, and the lady there told me that I won, and she almost passed out. I just won at Chipotle! Awesome, OP. That means you can afford extra guacamole. Our next Reddit post is from Most Opportunity. I'm a 29-year-old woman, and I've been married to my husband, who's 31 for five years. We have no kids. My husband has had a female friend since we started dating, and it's never bothered me. Like, live your life. Who am I to say anything? This female friend, however, is a pole dancing instructor, and the photos are a lot. Anyway, her studio that she worked at went up for sale and she reached out to my husband for money to buy it from the current owner. My husband mentioned this to me and that it would be $7,000. I told him that it wasn't a good idea and he didn't say anything else. 
The following night, it got brought up again, and I held my position on it. Fast forward a month, and this female asks me what a good name for her studio would be. I immediately asked my husband if he sent her $7,000, and he said, No, I sent her $20,000 from the joint bank account, the one that I never check. He said, I wanted to do it right, and it's a tax write-off. What? A tax write-off? I don't think that's accurate. Obviously, I'm angry, and I ask her if he's on the business license, which she tells me no, and that she never intended to put him on the license. So it's not a tax write-off. She noticed I was upset, and she said that she's sending him back $15,000. I can't understand why my husband is sending $20,000 to another female without ever mentioning it to me, and I've been furious ever since. Now I have trust issues. I've never checked his phone, but I did tonight. The girl messaged my husband that I wish she had never found out, and I filed for the LLC. And I thought that I would have that extra $15,000 cushion, but she's upset now. She said all of this with the undertone that I ruined her plan. He provided no defense on my part. But did I really need to include that if you've been reading this far? What am I supposed to do with this situation? Then OP posted an update. I transferred $20,000 from his stock account to mine. I do have a personal account with enough to figure it out from here. He's agreed to split assets evenly. I can choose what I want. Allegedly, he ended the friendship and is done with it, no matter how the situation turns out. Sure. I'm still missing $5,000, but whatever. He can figure that out. I'm gonna buy my mentally unstable self a treat for our anniversary that was this weekend and get on with life. OP, uh, you're surprisingly chill about this? If my wife did this to me, I would be talking to a divorce attorney the same day. No waiting, no, oh, what should I do, Reddit? I'm confused. No way, man. $20,000 to a stripper or a stripper dancer, whatever. It doesn't even matter. 20 k to another man? Uh-uh. Not playing that. Man, even if you just removed the other woman from the equation and he just took $20,000 and, I don't know, gambled it away, threw it off a bridge into the ocean, I'd still be looking at divorce. Add on top of that the emotional cheating and it just makes it so much worse. OP, I feel for you, man. Our next Reddit post is from Bad Boyfriend About to Ditch. This is stupid. It's dumb. It's a bad reason, but I can't effing take it anymore. My blood pressure has legit been spiking over this, and I just can't keep this up. I can't do it. My girlfriend and I have been together for close to a year, and this problem has only come up over the past two months. She never did this when we first got together, and I don't know why she effing started, but I'm so sick of it, it's crazy! Whenever we get food, she always eats off my plate, no matter what it is or where we are. The only thing that stops her is if I order the same exact thing as her, and she started ordering things that I can't eat, so I can't do that. If I tell her to stop in the moment, she just laughs. And when I talk to her about it privately, she blows me off because it isn't a big deal. But it is to me, god damn it! I have a history of food insecurity, which makes it a lot worse. And I've tried to explain that, but then she's snapping that I'm being condescending and I just can't. More recently, she had a plate full of her pizza on the table and had eaten over half of my medium pepperoni. And I was pissed, so I just grabbed two slices off her plate without asking, which made her go into shock for a moment before screaming and acting like I'd effing slapped her in the face or something, spitting and going red in the face. You don't even like Olive, you f***ing asshole. You always have to be right about everything, you dick. You can't just let me have this one f***ing thing. As if I'd been the one consistently stealing from her for months. I just went cold, tossed the pizza back on her plate, not at her because she was in my face screaming and a ways away from the plate. And then I just effing left the apartment. She claimed that there was no, <laughs> what? She claimed that there was no reason to get violent over text. And I knew then that I was effing done. I've never raised a hand or my voice to her and lightly tossing pizza onto a plate across the room while she's screaming into my face is violent? Nah, I'm getting away from her. She's now tried to apologize, but I'm not going near her again or answering any messages or calls from her. God only knows if she'll decide to call the effing cops and have me arrested for my violent behavior, but I'm not chancing it. 
If I'm so effing awful and violent, then she can get away from me and be safe to steal constantly from other people. I know that ghosting is wrong, and I've been through it before, but after that, I don't know if I trust myself to speak to her cordially again. I want to scream and curse back, but that isn't who I am, and that's not how I was raised. I don't like the person she's turned into, and I hate the person that she's turning me into. Okay, some people are really passionate about sharing food, and my wife is like this. This is kind of a lesson I've had to learn over time that just... Some people view food very differently and it's very important to them. So it's very important that they can share food with you and you share food with them. And I was prepared to talk about that until she blew up on OP about stealing her pizza. So clearly this isn't about food and sharing food. This is some sort of weird power play where she's basically just bullying OP. I almost have to wonder if she's doing this specifically because OP said that he has food insecurity. And don't feel guilty, OP. I don't even know if this qualifies as ghosting. It's more like a breakup fight, and that was just the end of the relationship. Our next Reddit post is from Throwaway Repulsive. I'm a single father of three children, a 25-year-old woman, a 23-year-old man, and a 17-year-old girl. I have always tried my hardest to raise them to be the best people they could be, hoping they'd grow up to be happy, successful adults. However, I can't shake the feeling that I failed with two of them. My oldest, who's 25, was frequently in trouble with the law as a minor. She eventually grew out of that, and I hoped that she would turn her life around. She worked multiple jobs, from a waiter to a stripper. I can admit that I was a little disappointed in her job choices, but I never said anything because she was making money. At 21, she moved out but soon got pregnant, and had to move back in with me because she couldn't afford both a baby and her apartment. Four years later, she's still living here. Then there's my son, who's 23, and to put it bluntly, he didn't graduate high school, doesn't have a job, and just sits in my basement smoking weed all day with his girlfriend. It breaks my heart to see him wasting his potential like this. I understand they're both still young and have time to turn their lives around, but I can't help feeling like I failed them as a father. Finally, there's my youngest daughter, who's 17. She makes me feel like I finally raised a kid who will be successful in life. She's about to graduate high school and will be attending an Ivy League college. She works a part-time job, has her life planned out, and she's never given me any major problems. While I'm incredibly proud of my youngest, I feel terrible for feeling this way. Her success highlights my failures with the other two. I love all my children, but I can't escape the guilt and sadness over how things have turned out. I even feel terrible for viewing them as failures in life and her as a success. Well, OP, maybe part of the reason why your youngest daughter has her life together is because she grew up watching her older siblings fail and she doesn't want to make that same mistake. Our next Reddit post is from Shelter Sensitive. My wife and I are in our late 30s. We're parents to two beautiful boys. For the longest time, my wife has chronically been unable to keep a schedule. I work 50 hours a week, come home, and despite my back being in agony on most days, I cook dinner four to five times a week. I'll generally do at least half the dishes. I'll bathe both of our sons. My wife, a stay-at-home mom, does the other household tasks. The only things that I generally avoid are tasks that involve leaning down to the floor. Picking up toys, for example, is hard for me. In addition, after work, I want to spend some time laying down flat when possible. It helps alleviate my back pain. The day before yesterday, I got home after working for 10 hours and cooked dinner for everybody. It was a nutritious meal using fresh vegetables. Our sons loved it and they both asked for more. I then threw the first load of dishes into the dishwasher, ran it, and went to my room to lie down. 20 minutes later, I came out to check on things. My wife was still slowly eating, staring at her phone. I went back. Another 30 minutes later, I came out. Same situation. I went back to lie down. Another 30 minutes later, I came out. Same situation. My wife is glued to her phone, slowly chewing every bite. I kind of lie down on the sofa because my back is still killing me, watching my older boy play with his Legos and my younger boy chew on Legos. Another 20 minutes pass, and it's 8.15. Way past bath time. You see, dinner was done early. The boys were fed early. Dishes were mostly done early. My wife was holding up the show, chewing slowly, doom scrolling through Instagram. She suddenly notices the time and, like every single solitary day, panics and says, It's 8.15! 
Yes, 8.15 comes at the same time every day. She proceeds to throw an enormous tantrum about me laying down and complains that I never do anything around the house. I gently suggest that she put her phone down and actually do something productive. She then drops a nuclear bomb on the conversation. How about I go start divorce proceedings? When she doesn't get her way, she frequently does this. She starts bringing up perceived slights and arguments from months or years ago at the same time. Yesterday, I got home and I cooked dinner as usual. This time, when my wife walked in, I told her to piss off. I told her she should just go to her room and screw around on her smartphone. I don't care. She did so, and something magical happened. Instead of me waiting for her to do her fair share, and instead of expecting her to pitch in properly, I did everything myself. With the goal of a 9 o'clock bedtime, I was done with literally everything, including cooking, cleaning the kitchen, washing the dishes, bathing both boys, brushing their teeth, reading them a bedtime story, and getting them into their pajamas by 8. I just couldn't believe how easy everything was without her. Without her two-hour dinner marathons holding everyone up, it was the easiest night I've probably ever had as a father. Honestly, I don't know what to do. My wife is completely close to any suggestions because, in her mind, she's the perfect mother and any suggestion is a personal slight. I'm so tired of having the finger pointed at me anytime something goes wrong. I'm not a single parent of two children. I'm a single parent of two boys and a constantly angry parasite. Well, OP, sounds like the solution is to just give your wife what she's asking for, a divorce. And you should probably file the divorce papers yourself because if you leave it to her, she'll probably drag her heels and take forever. I mean, realistically, what will you lose? Instead of taking care of three people, you only have to take care of two, so seems like a win to me. That was our slash off my chest. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit episodes every single day.